Hello, everybody, and welcome to the video presentation of my internal defense. My name is Jakob Snawart, and I've carried out my PhD at the University of Ghent under the supervision of Professor Mario van Hoek. Before I start explaining the chapters in this dissertation, I would like to thank the members of my jury for taking the time to read and to comment on my dissertation. This video supports and concisely reiterates the different studies in this PhD. I will start this presentation by briefly introducing project scheduling problems as well as project scheduling problems with multi-skilled resources. Afterwards, I will recap each chapter of this dissertation by giving a short overview of the research question, the performed research, and the main contributions. The title of my dissertation is Data and Solutions for Project Scheduling with Multi-Skilled Resources. And this can be divided into three main components. Namely, we will study project scheduling problems with multi-skilled resource constraints. And for these problems, we will provide and generate new data and solutions. In order to give a quick introduction on project scheduling problems, I will explain a small example of the resource constraint project scheduling problem or RCPSP, the project scheduling problem that you are most likely familiar with. In this problem, researchers study the impact of scheduling decisions on, in most cases, most cases the make span of the project. These scheduling decisions are constrained by precedence relations between the activities as well as resource availability constraints. On the left side of this slide, you can see a project network with five activities. And for each activity, I have provided the duration, which you can see on top of the activity on the left side of the bracket, and also the resource requirements on the right side of the bracket. Um, in this project network, you can also see the precedence relations. For example, activity A needs to be finished before activity C and D can be started. And these precedence relations are shown in the network by the arcs. Um, for this project, we can then see on the right side uh, the optimal schedule. Um, here we can see that this optimal schedule leads to a make span of 10 units. And this schedule uh, clearly satisfies all the precedence relations. For example, as I just explained, activity A is scheduled before C and D. And also, the resource availability constraint is satisfied. Now, of course, in this dissertation, I will look at the multi-skilled extension of the RCPSP, which is called the Multi-Skilled Resource Constraint Project Scheduling Problem, or MSRCPSP. And Actually, the basic problem and the goal of these two problems are exactly the same, but how you get to that goal is changed a little bit. Because for the MSRCPSP, instead of having resource requirements, now you have skill requirements, which are then, um, which are then satisfied by resources that master a set of these skills. So now an activity requires a set of skills, and this set of skills is mastered by the multi-skilled resources that can then execute these skills in the activities. To explain this a little bit further, I will also show uh, an example of the MSRCPSP for the exact same project as before. Um, we can now see that we still have the same project network, but we need a little bit more information in a skill demand table and also a resource table or a skill distribution table. So now in this case, for example, for activity A, we again require five resources, but we also specify that activity A requires three resources that master skill one and two resources that master skill two. In our resource table, we can then see which resources master skill one and which resources master skill two. And in this case, for example, only resource four is a multi-skilled resource because that is the only resource that master both skills. Now on the bottom left, you can see the schedule. And in this case, we can find an optimal schedule with a make span of 11 time units. This is one uh, time unit longer than the RCPSP. And this is because of, because of the skill constraints. Because in this problem, uh, activity C and D cannot be scheduled in parallel because they both require resources that master skill two. And in total, they require three resources that master skill two, while only two resources are available in the workforce. Therefore, they need to be scheduled after each other and the make span is elongated by one time unit. On the bottom right side, you can see the assignment table where we specify which resource performs which skill on which activity. 
Next to the basic MSRCPSP, we also studied extension of the MSRCPSP that incorporates hierarchical skills. The MSRCPSP with hierarchical skills, we call it the HMSRCPSP. And hierarchical skills specify a hierarchical ranking between the levels of these skills, which means that a lower skill level is always worse than a higher skill level. Uh, in addition, this means that a resource can, for example, master a certain skill, and that skill is then characterized by a skill level. So for example, a resource one can master a skill two at level five. But most importantly is that these hierarchical skills can have a widespread variety of impacts on project scheduling problems, some of which are shown below, and these are also studied in this dissertation. Uh, and I will quickly, uh, in one sentence, explain the HMSRCPSP um, extensions that we will uh, that we will research in this uh, dissertation. Uh, so for example, we have the task level restriction extension uh, in which the activities require a specific skill level to be executed. Then we have the resource level flexibility extension uh, in which activities require a specific, specific skill level, but the specific skill level can also be executed by resources that master a skill level higher than the one specified. Then we have the cost of resource skills extension, which just minimizes the total cost. We have the heterogeneous resource usage extension, which minimizes the usage cost of a common good. We have the quality as rework probability extension, in which the rework probability is, of course, minimized. And finally, we have the extension in which activities have variable activity durations. The outline of the chapters in this dissertation are um, presented on this slide. We start uh, this dissertation in chapter two, in which we will uh, explain a data generation procedure. And the proposed research question in this case is what will be the impact of some new skill and resource parameters on the solution quality and on the instance hardness of the MSRCPSP. Then in the third and the sixth um, chapter, we will go more deeper into uh, solution procedures. And more specifically, we will develop meta heuristics for the MSRCPSP as well as the HMSRCPSP. And therefore, we have two research questions. The first of which is uh, looking at whether uh, advanced solution algorithms can efficiently solve the MSRCPSP in comparison to an IP solver. And the second looks at how we can develop good meta heuristics for um, the HMSRCPSP extensions. Then uh, in the fourth chapter, we will try to uh, formulate some LP formulations for the HMSRCPSP extensions. And as such, we try to look at which linear programming formulation can cope the best with the complexity of the MSRCPSP with different impacts of hierarchical skills. And then finally, in chapter five, we go into a more deeper analysis of the multi-skilled workforce composition. And more specifically, we look at the computational complexity of assembling a workforce. And therefore, uh, we wonder whether multi-skilled workforces with specific char characteristics can be assembled efficiently based on certain skill requirements of activities. Now, to start off in chapter two, uh, we focus, as, a, as mentioned, on artificial instance, instance generation for the MSRCPSP. And more specifically, we look at what resource and skill parameters we need to assemble we need to have to assemble a single MSRCPSP instance. And additionally, we will, ins we will analyze the impact or the predictive power of these parameters on instance hardness. And for this, of course, we will create a state-of-the-art artificial data generation procedure based on these new parameters. Um, this study has been accepted and published in the European Journal of Operational Research. Um, now, there are five main uh, skill and resource parameters that are required to assemble an instance of the MSRCPSP. And firstly, we have the project skill factor, which uh, signifies the number of skill types that are required per activity. And it's also uh, a measure for the density of the requirement matrix. Uh, so for example, as you can see on the left table there, if the project skill factor is equal to 0 0.5, that means that in each activity, half of the skill types will be required. In this case, we only have two, so that means that in each activity, one skill type is required. 
Then we have the project skill strength, which measures the skill availability or the skill scarceness in the project. And it is calculated as the ratio of the amount a skill is available and the amount it is required by all the activities in the project. And for the skill strength, uh, we just look at the availability. So for example, if the skill strength or the project skill strength is equal to zero, that means that we have the minimum possible amount of skills available that can feasibly execute the project. Uh, then we have the resource availability, which is a metric for the resource scarceness in the project. Uh, and it is again looking in the range of possibilities for resources. So if the resource availability is equal to zero, that means that the minimum number of possible resources are available. Um, next to the resource scarceness, this resource availability also determines the multi-skilledness of the resources in the workforce. So as you can see in the other tables on the slide, for example, if the skill strength and the resource availability are low, that means that the number of skills is minimized, which is in this case four, and also the number of resources in, is minimized. And these four skills can only be mastered by at minimum two resources, so therefore we have two resources. If we then put, for example, the resource availability to higher, we can find a resource with four single skilled workers. Uh, if we put the skill strength too high, we have a lot of skills available. And then we can, again, combine this with either a, uh, a low resource availability or a high resource availability to get a very multi-skilled workforce or to get a very single skilled workforce. Um, next, we have the skill strength variability and the resource availability. And these are two parameters that introduce variability into the workforce uh, in two different ways. First off, the skill strength variability determines the disparity in the skill availability of the skill types. Um, so if, for example, if the skill strength variability is low or is equal to zero, that means that all skill types will be evenly available or equally scarce. While if it is high, that means that one skill type will be uh, available a lot while the other will be very scarce. Um, and also, as you can see on the two tables here, for example, when it is low, you can see that each skill type is mastered by exactly four resources. And, on the second table, you can see that skill types one and two are mastered by respectively six and five resources, while the third skill type is only mastered by one resource. Then for the resource availability variability, uh, this one measures the variability in the multi-skilledness of the resource. Um, this is again uh, easy to understand if you look at the, the third and the fourth table. For example, if the variability is very low, that means that each resource will master exactly two skills in this case. While if it is high, it means that some resources will master all skills, while other resources will master only one skill. Uh, as mentioned before, we created a generation procedure in this chapter. Um, and here you can see the flowchart of this generation procedure. We start by um, generating a network from Rangan2 because we want to focus more on the workforce side of things. Uh, we use a reliable network generator, which we found in Rangen 2. Um, then we generated skill requirements based on this project uh, skill factor, as I just explained. Then we generated master skills based on the skill strength value and the skill strength variability value. We went to generate resources based on the resource availability and resource availability variability values. And then we needed to do a feasibility check. This feasibility check, uh, is needed because even though we um, generate enough skills for the requirements, it can sometimes happen that due to the uh, skill constraints, um, the instance is actually not feasible and the workforce cannot feasibly execute all activities in the project. If that happens, we work with a rejection method and we just try to generate a new multi-skilled workforce. Um, now, the data that we have um, generated, we compared it to three benchmark data sets of Montoya, Almeida, and Miskowski. Um, these, um, we then plotted all our instances on uh, a skill strength and resource availability graph, which showed that the current um, instances in the literature only generated uh, instances for very low skill strength values and very high resource availability values, while our data set um, can fulfill or can generate instances for the full spectrum. Um, but obviously showing that our data generation procedure can generate a wider range of workforces 
does not mean too much if these workforces do not really represent real life multi-skilled workforces. And therefore we um, gathered some empirical instances in order to validate and uh, substantiate that these uncovered parts are indeed significant. And in total, um, 17 empirical projects were gathered from the software and the railway construction industries. And if we plot these values on the same graphs, we can see that indeed data exists uh, on the low skill strength and low resource availability uh, side, but also a lot of projects exist for high values of resource availability and high values of um, skill strength, which are not really considered in the current data sets of the literature. Um, then finally, we also talked about um, the predictive power of our parameters or our parameters on um, the instance hardness. And therefore we created a chain regression tree. Uh, and in this chain regression tree, we use the percentage gap calculated by CIPLEX using the linear relaxation and we use that as a measure to represent instance hardness. And then in this shade regression tree, um, the parameters are used as splitting values to determine subgroups which um, have low statistical variation uh, and therefore which are significantly different, different from each other in terms of instant hardness. Uh, from this shade regression tree, we can see that the serial parallel network indicator SP is actually the best splitting value. That means that it has the most predictive power in, work in terms of instance hardness. And a low SP coincides with a higher percentage gap. The second most predictive um, parameter is the skill strength. And for that one, the same goes uh, higher or lower skill strength coincides with a higher gap. Now to finish off this chapter, the contribution is threefold. Namely, um, we have generated new artificial instances that uncover new parts of the search base in terms of workforce generation. Uh, secondly, we have also gathered a set of empirical instances for the MSRCPSP, which we have used to validate our artificial data. And lastly, we did uh, a good analysis of the instance hardness and the impact of our parameters. Um, now, in the third chapter, we want to give an answer to the research question whether advanced solution algorithms can efficiently solve the MSRCPSP with breadth and depth. And then we compare that to an IP solver. And for this, our approach was to develop a hybrid genetic algorithm to solve the MSRCPSP with breadth, depth, and variable durations. This chapter has also been published in the European Journal of Operational Research. So um, in this problem, the MSRCPSP is extended with two resource characteristics. The breadth on the one hand uh, means the amount of skills that a resource master. So it's kind of a measure for the flexibility of the resource. Uh, and in some other papers, it is called the categorical skills. If the breadth is equal to one, then we have a single skilled resource. If the breadth is higher than one, then we have a multi-skilled resource. Secondly, we have the depth which uh, specifies the efficiency level at which a skill will be performed. This also sometimes calls the hierarchical skills. Um, a depth equal to one is a default efficiency level. If the depth is higher than one, the resource is more efficient than the skill. If it is lower than one, the resource is less efficient than at the skill. And now because we introduced this depth variable, we also have a variable activity duration. And in this case, the durations are based on the depth of the resources assigned to the activity. Uh, and we have a reciprocal relation, which means that, as you can see in the graph, if the depth is higher, that means that the duration will be lower, while if the depth of the assigned resource is lower, the duration will be higher. Um, in this hybrid genetic algorithm, we have introduced some new elements. Uh, first of all, we have created a new representation. Uh, our representation consists of an activity list which specify the priority of the activities in the scheduling decisions. Uh, and secondly, we have introduced a new priority rule list for the resource assignment. In this list, um, each activity gets assigned a priority rule um, in order to assign uh, the resources according to that priority rule. Um, the most used uh, presentation or representation for resource assignment was the single resource list, as you can see on the bottom right, uh, which is just a single list of the priorities of the resources, which is the same list for all activities. 
Um, now, because we use this new priority rule list, um, we had the advantage that we could use a different list per activities, but of course, we need to um, decide the priority rules ourselves. Therefore, we did a pre-processing step in which we first solved the genetic algorithm with a single resource list. And then we took the 10 best values and used their resource list to introduce them as well as priority rules in the priority rule list. Um, now, this is the main uh, flowchart of our genetic algorithm. It is quite straightforward as a genetic algorithm, but it has two clear new elements, which is the pre-processing on the one hand. And secondly, we also introduce two new local searches, which are based on the skill criticality. The skill criticality determines whether the skills in uh, the project are scarce or not. So if there is high scarcity in the skills, that means that we will use one local search, while if we have low skills criticality, will we use the other local search? Um, uh, the results of this genetic algorithm showed that the genetic algorithm clearly outperformed CPLEX, and it also did that in a fraction of time. Uh, and as you can see, as we already explained in the chain regression tree, the higher the SP value, the lower the percentage gap will be, or the less hard the instance is. Now, the contribution of this um, chapter is again threefold. First of all, we defined and solved a new extension of the MSRCPSP in which the hierarchical skills have an impact on the duration. We presented the hybrid genetic algorithm, um, which has a couple of new elements. First of all, we introduced new resource and skill criticalities. We also designed new resource priority rules, which are then also used in our new representation. We explained a new crossover. We have presented two local searches, and we have also, as I already mentioned, introduced this new pre-processing step. And lastly, we also uh, extracted some managerial insights for multi-skilled workforces out of this study. First of all, for parallel projects, we found that uh, the mastered skills always need to be less than 40% of the total required skills in the activities. Um, secondly, the number of resources need to be smaller than 60% of the master skills. And then the number of multi-skilled resources, which is the resources that master at least two skills, need to be smaller than 50% of the total workforce. For serial projects, we found that the master skills need to be even lower, which is only lower than 20% of the total work required skills. But on the other hand, we found that the number of resources or the number of multi-skilled resources has no impact on the mix band. This means that uh, once you know how many skills uh, that are mastered in the workforce, it doesn't matter uh, if they are mastered by different resources. So you have a single skilled workforce or a multi-skilled workforce, this will have no impact at all on the make span. Um, then in the, in the fourth chapter, we um, developed uh, seven linear programming formulations to solve seven different problems, namely the MSRCPSP and six extensions of the MSRCPSP with hierarchical skills. Um, and we also created a modular data set to solve these problems. This study has, again, been published already in computers and industrial engineering. Uh, the following slide gives an overview of how the seven problems are related to each other. Um, the HMS RCPSP with variable activity duration, which is two here on this slide, uh, can be created from the MS RCPSP by introducing um, the variable duration constraints. Then for all the other problems, we need to introduce skill level requirements. Um, and for the task level restriction extension, we also introduce a set of resources that spe specify that only the resources that master a certain level can execute the activity. For all other problems, we, need, we specify that also resources with a higher level can execute the activity. Then um, extensions five, six, and seven can be created from the resource level flexibility extension. Uh, for the cost of resource skills extension, we just need to introduce a cost objective, a deadline constraint, and a resource inclusion constraint. And for the heterogeneous resource usage extension and the quality extension, we just need to add respectively a usage objective and a rework objective together with a deadline constraint. The seven uh, LP formulations are linked as follows. First of all, we have the sequence and natural date formulation, which is a continuous time formulation. And then we have in total six time index formulations. 
uh, there are three basic ones, basic ones uh, which are then extended with disaggregated precedence relations in formulations three, five, and seven. The normal time index formulations is linked to the one with different start times by um, splitting the assignment variable into two different value variables and by creating new constraints for the start times. And then lastly, uh, to go from uh, formulation four to the formulation with the new skill assignment constraints, we need to change the modeling consistency of, first of all, the start times, but also the skill assignment in the model. Um, again, for this, uh, to solve this problem, we created a modular data set, which was created based on the instances of chapter two, and then extended with new data modules for the HMS RCPSP extensions. Uh, and here, this flow, flow chart shows how we can create an instance for these problems. First of all, we have the project module, which is directly taken from chapter two. Next, we choose which workforce module we need to take, we want to take. Do we have a workforce without skill levels or with hierarchical skills? Then we decide on the skill requirements module. And then lastly, we can choose the specific data module for the extensions. Uh, if you want to, researchers can also combine these uh, last three modules to um, create new models that have not been considered in this study. Um, the computational results of these models show that the continuous time formulation always performs best. Of the time index formulations, the normal time index formulation um, seems to outperform the others. Um, and especially if we look at um, the variable activity duration extension, there we can see that only the continuous time formulation um, had results or yielded results within the time limit. For the different problems, we can see that the TLR and the RLF extensions um, give very similar results. And additionally, the cost extension and the usage extension, the quality extension also gave similar results due to their inherent uh, similarities and also their complementary objectives. Finally, the contribution of this chapter is that we now created seven linear programming formulations for the MSRCPSP and six extensions. Uh, we also created a modular extension to the data set of chapter two to be able to handle even more problems. Next, we uh, provide the bounds of the linear relaxation of these linear programming formulations and also the results will be made available. And lastly, we look at the impact of the categorical and the hierarchical skills on each specific extension in this study. In chapter five, um, we go into detail on how uh, workforces can be assembled. Uh, and more specifically, we define some new multi-skilled workforce problems that try to find workforces with either minimized number of workers or a minimized number of master skills. And for these multi-skilled workforce problems, we also prove their computational, um, their computational complexity. And this study is currently under revision. I think it's already at the second revision now at computers and operations research. Um, and as the title already reveals, the main focus will be on how to assemble these multi-skilled workforces. Um, important to take into account here is that we do not do any scheduling in this study. So we go away from the scheduling of activities. In this case, we only look at the assembly of uh, workforces. And for that, we have three sets. We have a set of multi-skilled workforces, uh, workers, a set of skill types, and a set of jobs. And each job has a demand for certain uh, skill types, which are the skill requirements. Um, furthermore, each worker can only perform one skill per job. Then in these multi-skilled workforce problems, the decisions to be made are, first of all, which workers will work, which is the worker selection decision, and um, what resources will each worker or what skills will each worker master in the workforce to be able to feasibly execute all the skill requirements. Um, this is a, a small example for a multi-skilled workforce problem in which we tried to find a feasible workforce. On the top left, we have the skill requirements. And on the bottom and on the top right, we have a feasible workforce. Now, how can we verify that this is indeed a feasible workforce? We need to do that by checking whether we can find a certain feasible assignment for each activity in um, the project. 
which is done on the bottom here. And because uh, we found a feasible assignment for each, pro uh, for each activity, we know that this is also a feasible workforce. Now, uh, I will present two types of multi-skilled workforce problem, each with its dedicated and with a restricted variant. The first one is the minimum resource availability problem, uh, in which we will try to find uh, a feasible workforce with a minimum workforce size. Uh, this means that we just try to look for the workforce um, with the smallest number of workers not taking into account the skills that can feasibly execute um, the activities. Um, in terms of complexity, this MRA problem can be easily solved in polynomial time. Then for its dedicated variant, um, we look again at the workforce with a minimum workforce size. However, we now want to look um, at the workforce when the number of workers per skill type is fixed. So this means that these uh, row sums are fixed. And we look, for example, in this case, at a workforce in which each skill type is mastered by exactly one resource. Then for the restricted variants, we look again at uh, the efficient workforce with a minimum workforce size, but the total number of mastered skills are fixed. So again, in this example, if the total number of mastered work for workers is equal to five, then the restricted MROP will give a solution of four workers. On the other hand, the minimum skill availability problem or the MSUP tries to look at an efficient workforce that minimizes the number of mastered skills in the workforce or the minimum skill availability. The dedicated variant looks then at the minimum skill availability when the number of mastered skills are fixed per workers. So for example, uh, what about the workforce where each worker masters exactly two skills and the restricted MSEP looks at um, the workforce with the minimum number of master skills when the number of workers is fixed. So for example, in this case, if we say we want to find uh, a workforce with four workers, what is the minimum skills uh, that they can have to feasibly execute all activities? In this case, it is equal to eight. Um, the contribution of this chapter is that we defined and give the complexity proofs for six new multi-skilled workforce problems. Um, and these multi-skilled workforce problems can facilitate more um, in-depth multi-skilled workforce analysis that investigate specific workforce characteristics uh, regarding the number of available and mastered skills. Uh, it also allows to generate multiple workforces that can be compared for some make spend cost analysis in, for example, projects. And then lastly, this chapter also creates research opportunities um, that investigate these specific workforces and their characteristics in, for example, project or workforce scheduling. Uh, in the last chapter, we will, look on how to, we will look at how to develop efficient solution methodologies uh, that can solve the HMSR CPSP and its extensions. And for this, we will uh, develop new problem-specific local searches, and we will embed them in a, a genetic algorithm framework. Again, the extensions that we try to solve have already been mentioned before. We use the task level restriction, the resource level flexibility extension, the one that minimizes cost, minimizes usage, and minimizes rework probability. Um, this is the framework that we use. Again, it was embedded in a genetic algorithm, so it looks like a genetic algorithm, but there is one important difference, which are the local searches that we introduce. For the task level restriction problem, we introduce an immediate follower local search, um, which will try to reassign uh, an activity in order to left shift its immediate followers. So example, for example, in this small figure, activity E and activity E prime, both uh, are assigned resource three. So we then remove resource three from activity E to be able to assign them in parallel. For the resource level flexibility extension, we, in, we propose the level flexibility LS, which tries to again reassign activity E in order to left shift an activity that is uh, scheduled later in the schedule. Um, the biggest difference here is that it doesn't have to be an immediate follower and also that activity E prime can also be reassigned to be able to left shift it. For uh, the cost local search, we try to minimize uh, the fixed cost in the problem 
by trying to remove a certain resource from all assignments in the project. And how we will remove this resource is by doing uh, three possible swaps. The first swap just tries to um, remove a resource from the activity. So in this case, we always try to remove resource tree. Um, in swap A, we just try to remove resource tree and try to replace it with an available or an assigned resource. In swap B, we try to remove resource tree by um, swapping a parallel or swapping the assignment of a parallel activity in order to create new uh, unassigned resources, which can then swap for resource tree. And in swap C, uh, we try to right shift some activities in order to create um, new unassigned activities at that time period, which can then be used to swap out uh, resource tree. Finally, we have the deadline Slack local search, which is used for the quality or the heterogeneous resource usage extension. Um, and in this um, local search, we try to take advantage of the Slack that we have on a deadline to right shift some activities within the boundaries of the deadline in order to maximize the or to optimize the assignment of individual activities and therefore optimize the objectives in these problems. So for example, in this small example, we right shift activity E prime so that there are more available so that actually all uh, workers all available for activity E and we can optimize its assignment. The results of this research showed um, that our problem uh, specific local search really do improve the solutions, but they work even better if we combine them with the versatile problem uh, specific local searches that were also already presented in chapter three. Um, only for the cost or for the CRS extension does a problem specific local search work worse than a versatile local search. This is because the versatile local search actually focuses on minimizing variable costs, while our problem specific local search focuses on minimizing fixed costs. However, therefore they are very complementary. So if we combine them, we get a big improvement on the percentage gap. The contribution of um, this chapter is again threefold. Namely, we um, propose new problem specific local searches and um, for multiple HMSRCPSP extensions. Secondly, um, the solution framework can solve the problem more efficiently than the LP formulations of chapter four, which then create the best known solutions that are made available for all present, presented problems now in this dissertation. Um, now, what is now the overall contribution of this PhD? Uh, and actually the main goal of this PhD was to create um, uh, a sort of benchmark for future research on multi-skilled project scheduling. And we have done that in five different aspects. First of all, we have formally defined the MSRCPSP and six extensions with hierarchical skills. And then for each of these problems, we have created, created artificial and empirical data instances. Uh, we have proposed seven LP formulations for each of these problems. And we have also uh, provided best known solutions for these problems, which will hopefully trigger um, other researchers to also research the multi-skilled project scheduling problems and try to beat our best known solutions. And finally, we also did a more in-depth analysis of multi-skilled team compositioning to strive uh, to analyze specific workforces also in, schedule, in scheduling in the future, hopefully. Uh, and I will end this presentation with some future research perspectives, which I have um, divided into three main topics. The first of which is the MSRCPSP. I think uh, an important future research perspective for this is to develop new and exact um, heuristic algorithms for the new um, artificial data instances that we have created. Not only that, but uh, it might be important to try and um, improve the best known solutions that we have provided. And in addition, uh, I think it might be interesting to verify whether current existing approaches are still as qualitative for the new instances that we provide and the new uncovered parts in terms of workforce um, that we have generated. For the HMSRCPSP, again, first of all, uh, 
a future research perspective should be to try and create new algorithms to improve our best known solutions. But additionally, because of our modular data set, uh, it allows researchers to study new problems by combining the extensions that we propose. And of course, the um, variety or the types of impacts of hierarchical skills is not limited to the ones we have presented. So there might be some other types of impacts that can be uh, investigated. Lastly, in terms of workforce analysis, um, I think uh, a good research perspective is to try and develop algorithms that can efficiently solve the presented multi-skilled workforce problems, and then also analyze the impact of specific workforces on project scheduling problems. Um, yeah, this concludes my presentation uh, that further clarifies the research in my PhD. Thank you for listening, and I'm looking forward to your comments and questions. See you at the internal defense.